is Mitchell Zoller with Global Medical News Network. Uh, Professor Cohn, this morning you were talking about the um, inappropriate, perhaps, overdiagnosis of bipolar disorder in uh, early age adolescents. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about what you see as what's going on with this field right now? Well, I think that uh, the main problem uh, is the absence of a de developmental view about this issue because uh, I think that all sa child psychiatrists uh, do share the idea that they see kids with irritability, uh, hyperactivity, uh, very severe mood dysregulation. But the problem uh, was, uh, are these kids that share symptoms with uh, manic or uh, uh, hyperthemia should be called bipolar disorder or not. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, so in your assessment, it's at about age 11, uh, age 12, when you could really begin to be confident that the uh, symptoms of bipolar disorder do reflect a true case? Yes, I think that puberty, because sometimes it's earlier and, and later, I think that puberty is, is a quite a good threshold to mm -hmm. talk about mm -hmm. that. And um, I know that there is a uh, challenge with the uh, differential diagnosis of bipolar disorder you were talking about. So what are some of the cardinal features that should be looked at in a child of that age or an older adolescent to kind of be confident that it's going to be bipolar disorder? Well, I, I, if I have to summarize, I think that you have two main challenges. The first one uh, regards the differential diagnosis with schizophrenia. It's difficult because uh, many uh, bipolar adolescents have psychotic symptoms. So it's not only recognition, it's a real difficulty in itself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's only the follow-up of the, the adolescents that really uh, make us confident with the diagnosis of bipolar disorder compared to schizophrenia. The second challenge in terms of differential diagnosis is the one we talked about, uh, pediatric bipolar disorder. Uh, actually, I don't use the term pediatric bipolar disorder because I think that it's uh, a mistake because when you look at these kids, they have uh, a chronic condition, they have many developmental problems, many family issues, many social problems, and I think that the proper uh, way to evaluate them is to, and to treat them, is to individualize the treatment for uh, looking at all the problems they have, because usually they have uh, multiple uh, problems. So I'm very pleased that the DSM-5 workgroup uh, intend to uh, improve uh, the way these kids will be characterized by changing the labeling. So severe mood dysregulation, this is the NIH uh, uh, concept, and uh, the DSM-5 group talked about temper dysregulation disorder with dysphoria. Mm -hmm. And I think that this labeling will help to characterize better these kids and not to confuse them with bipolar disorder. <laughs>